Um, yeah, so today I'll be talking about uh, W1 plus infinity symmetry and 4D gravitational scattering, which was work that came out at the end of last year together with Monica Pate. Is the mic sound okay? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so first I wanted to thank the organizers for putting on this great conference. It's my first Amplitudes conference and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, so I'm going to also include some review that's probably familiar to people here, but I just wanted to talk about this for completeness since it's the first time we've talked about uh, these sort of uh, celestial holography stuff in the conference. So I'm going to just first review uh, how we can think about soft graviton theorems as symmetries. So an important uh, subject of study for the past 10 plus years is how we can think about soft theorems as symmetries. Today I'll be talking about uh, gravity. So we can think about soft graviton theorems as equivalently warded entities for symmetries of the S matrix. And so I'll just review how this works in the case of the leading soft graviton theorem. Uh, so this is probably familiar to everyone. Uh, if we insert a positive helicity graviton with energy omega and direction q hat uh, into our out state, and then we take its energy to zero, what we find is a universal factor multiplying the original amplitude um, that has a pole in omega. And if we take the residue of this pole, we find uh, the soft factor S minus one, which is the sum of soft factors, uh, one for each external particle that involve the graviton's direction Q hat. And the, here, right, yeah. So the soft factor involves a gravitational coupling kappa, the graviton's polarization and direction, and then the external particle's momenta. So we can rewrite this as um, the action of an infinitesimal symmetry on the S matrix or a charge that commutes with the S matrix, uh, where the charge is parameterized by the graviton's direction, Q hat. So this charge has two parts, the soft part, or this, that inserts soft gravitons in the in and out states, and then this part that involves the soft factors for each external particle. Uh, so uh, if you rewrite this, the soft graviton theorem implies that this charge commutes with the S matrix. And we have infinitely many symmetries, one for each graviton momentum direction. Uh, and this is equivalent to super translation symmetries. So in this talk, I'll be parameterizing null momenta by a point Z and Z bar, uh, as Kevin was saying, on the celestial sphere or plane. So here, omega is going to be an energy scale, and Z and Z bar are points on this plane. So we can interpret the soft factor, SK, uh, parameterized by these points Z and Z bar as generating infinitesimal symmetry transformations on the hard states. And the soft factors are just one part of the charge. There's also this part that inserts soft gravitons. So these generalized symmetries also generally involve the insertion of soft gravitons. OK, so this is the leading case. Uh, we've also learned about the subleading cases. So uh, yeah, so the leading case we've already seen is equivalent to super translation symmetry. Uh, so this reference, this is the first reference with massless external particles, and the second reference has massive external particles. Uh, the subleading soft theorem is equivalent to super translation, super rotation, or Virasaro symmetry, and together these uh, form the extended BMS symmetry with Poincaré as a global subgroup. So you can ask, what about the further subleading terms in the soft expansion? Uh, and one result in this direction was that we found the algebra of further subleading soft graviton modes extends a chiral half of Poincaré to this infinite symmetry algebra known as W1 plus infinity. So it's chiral here because we're looking at one graviton polarization at a time. And this is at tree level with, with uh, minimal coupling. Uh, so this result, as uh, Kevin mentioned, was derived in celestial holography. And we also derived the symmetry action on hard massless particles. And um, in celestial holography, we use a basis of conformal primary operators that transform as highest weight in highest weight representations of Lorentz symmetry, which is equivalent to an SL2C global conformal symmetry. So one thing that we uh, in particular made use of here was the 2D locality of massless, par massless particles. As we saw, massless particles go to one point in the celestial sphere. So if they become collinear in the bulk, you can think about them approaching each other in an OPE on the boundary. And then you can use CFT techniques with OPEs. So um, in this talk, what I'm going to be doing is stepping back and thinking about how we can derive the W symmetry action from momentum space soft theorems, and also in a way that we can uh, drive an action from massless and massive particles together 
uh, since massive particles don't have this feature where um, they're collinear with a soft graviton. And uh, this derivation will be guided by conformal covariance, uh, very much in the spirit of this uh, celestial holography result. OK. So let's just look at the expansion of an amplitude uh, with a graviton that we're taking to be soft. So we, we have our amplitude with an outgoing positive helicity graviton. We can expand it, again, at tree level as this power series in omega, where the leading term uh, is the Weinberg pole, omega to the minus 1. And to isolate the elf term in this expansion, we can take a limit where we look at different derivatives in omega and take omega to 0, which is equivalent uh, by a delta function identity to this limit as epsilon goes to 0 of epsilon multiplying the Mellon transform of the amplitude with omega to the minus L plus epsilon. And the amplitude has to fall off fast enough uh, for this to converge. So uh, just to review uh, for people who aren't familiar with the celestial holography picture, uh, for a conformal primary basis, we want to think about uh, operators in a 2D CFT. Uh, local operators in a 2D CFT are, live at a point on the celestial sphere. They also are diagonal under rotations around that point and dilations of the point. So, uh, and those eigenvalues are delta and s. And um, massless particles we've already seen are local at a point on the celestial sphere. They um, have eigenvalues under little group rotations about the momentum direction. And then the analog of dilations would be boosts along the direction. Energy, of course, transforms under boosts. So instead of taking momentum eigenstates that have energy, we integrate over the energies with this vector delta uh, that then becomes the boost eigenvalue. So now we have our things labeled by delta s, delta and s, and we can think about weights h and h bar, uh, delta plus s, and delta minus s over 2. Okay, so what we see from this definition is that the sub L plus 1 leading saw graviton, or the sub L plus 1 part of this amplitude, is already in a state with definite conformal weight delta is equal to minus L from this uh, transform. And what this tells us is that the soft factors that generate the symmetry action in momentum space on hard particles should also transform covariantly with this weight. So this will, this will be our guide as looking at uh, the subleading soft expansion. So this is a very brief review of what's from, probably from very familiar to everyone of Lorentz transformations, uh, but just in this parametrization where we put things on the celestial sphere. Uh, so the, we're going to look at transformations in the same way as we do in a 2D CFT. So again, massive particles are parameterized by the sine epsilon for incoming and outgoing, and energy scale omega, and this point z and z bar uh, on the celestial sphere. Lorentz transformations act as Mobius transformations on the celestial sphere. And momenta, of course, uh, this momentum p, p mu transforms as a vector. The parts q hat and omega transform with a definite scaling uh, weights h and h bar, or these factors of cz plus d and cz bar plus d bar. Uh, but importantly, polarization vectors, as, as familiar to everyone here from spinner helicity, require a reference point or an auxiliary spinner to transform covariantly. And uh, apologies, everything here is going to be in vectors, uh, so, uh, but, but just bear with me. So this uh, Polarization vector, of course, I could write it in terms of spinners, but the polarization vector we write with this reference point, z0. And then if we do that, and we do this Lorentz transformation where we also transform the external point, the reference point, z0, we find this nice uh, definite wave scaling. Okay, so massive particles, uh, instead of going to time-like infinity, or to null infinity, they go to time-like infinity. And we're parameterizing them with a, a sine epsilon and mass m. And now this direction vector that involves the points y, w, and w bar that are on um, a, a space, spatial hyperboloid or Euclidean ADS3. And this n is just a fixed vector. So yeah, Lorentz here's the metric for the Euclidean ADS3. And Lorentz transformations act as isometries here. Just so very concretely, you can transform the points like this. And putting these all together, we find the usual vector transformations as we should. So we're going to look at these transformations to see um, how the subleading terms in the soft expansion transform. So we're, again, we're considering our low energy expansion uh, of the graviton. 
And the leading term we already discussed takes this familiar form. The subleading term is also familiar. So in the subleading term, there's also the soft factor that factors out of the amplitude that now involves the uh, angular momentum of the external particles. So if this, yeah, this is acting on scalars, if there was a spinning particle, there'd also be some intrinsic spin factor here. And then beyond subleading order, the soft expansion uh, was found by these authors to take this form where we have one term that's a soft factor multiplying the original amplitude, uh, an analogy with the leading and subleading case. And then there's this additional non-universal term. Uh, so this is again at tree level with minimal coupling. Uh, at, so at sub-subleading order, at least at tree level, there's a small list of higher dimension operators that correct this. But beyond sub-subleading order, the form of this non-universal term is just like, I don't know if there's any simplifying structure that's known or expected for it. Uh, so this soft factor, the S double prime, involves angular momentum generators and then powers of this uh, operator Q hat dot partial P. Um, and yeah, and then the non-universal terms are subleading in Q hat dot P. So I've called this S double prime because we're gonna modify it to be uh, something different later. And uh, we're gonna need to modify it because these soft factors S double prime do not transform as primaries under conformal transformations. And in particular, this power of Q hat dot partial PK is a problem. Uh, but there's a natural proposal to fix this, which is to complete them to angular momentum generators. So if we just take this Q uh, partial P multiply and divide by epsilon dot p, and then at, bring in this term, which is subleading in q dot p. So it's what would have been called part of non-universal stuff before, and pull it in. Now we find this nice thing that's 1 over epsilon dot p times f, where f is anti-symmetric combination of epsilon and q times the angular momentum generator. OK. And then this, as when you do this, you, the soft factors take this nice form, uh, which has already been found in the literature, and, then, and, and these authors also note this, that this nicely exponentiates. Uh, so yeah, th there's a soft factor that transforms covariantly with the same weight as soft gravitons. And you can just check this by transforming everything. Um, and what's important here is that this epsilon depends on the reference point z0. So this transformation, for this to be covariant, you have to be transforming the z and z bar and z0 the reference point to get this nice transformation. So yeah, uh, two things to note here. One is that the division by epsilon dot P implies that this isn't gauge invariant. And also the dependence on this reference point Z0 means that the partition into what, into like the soft factor and the rest of the amplitude isn't strictly conformally invariant because we have to also, for this transformation to be um, covariant, we need to also transform Z0. So if we just transform the external stuff without transforming the reference point, uh, the partition mixes between the soft factor and the non-universal stuff. But this sort of subtle non-invariance will drop out at the level of a symmetry action, uh, which we'll define on the next slide. So uh, we don't need to worry about it at the level of the soft factor because at the level of the symmetry action, uh, which we'll see in a second, it will drop out. So to define the symmetry action, we're going to consider a primary descendant of the soft factor. So it's just um, a fact that uh, functions that transform with this weight, with the weight of the soft factor here, admit a descendant that also transforms as a primary. So the descendant is we get by taking derivatives in Z bar. And then this transforms with a nice weight uh, minus L plus two over two, L plus four over two. Uh, so they add a weight on the rights from the derivatives. And nicely, this expression does no longer depends on the reference point. So it's fully covariant without having to worry about the reference point. And at the level of the primary descendant, there is an invariant partition between what we call the primary descendant of the soft factor and the primary descendant of the rest of the amplitude. Thanks. OK. Uh, so to find the W structure, we are gonna focus on the right weight of the primary, which we call P. So we're gonna be like thinking about P instead of L. And uh, primaries of weight P also generally admit a finite set of modes that are closed under 
uh, this SL2R anti-holomorphic half of SL2C. And the modes range from 1 minus p to p minus 1. So we can consider this symmetry action of a generator that's labeled by p, which again uh, corresponds to a different term, the different terms in the soft expansion, and this closed set of modes m, which we get by taking an integral of the primary descendant of the soft factor uh, over the plane with different sort of modes in z bar. And uh, so the leading soft theorem here, L equals minus one, we have P is three halves. The closed set of two modes are uh, M is plus and minus one, one half. And this gives us chiral translations. Uh, the subleading case is L equals zero, so P equals two. And we find a closed set of three modes, M is one, zero, and minus one, which are a chiral half of Lorentz. And then, uh, Beyond that, we can just we can prove that this action satisfies uh, the W one plus infinity algebra, and this proof is by induction. Uh, yeah, so, so we have this algebra uh, is defined by its commutator, and for the mass. So now we have this this action for the massless case that involves integrals over the plane, and to find uh, the W symmetry action on massive particles. In principle, we can follow the same prescription, um, namely taking modes of a primary descendant of the soft factor, as long as the primary descendant uh, is partitioned invariantly from the rest of the amplitude, like, well, like, like it needed to be in the massless case. So if we take massive external particles now and look at that soft factor S prime, for the leading, subleading, and subleading and sub-subleading cases, so L is minus one, zero, and one. Uh, the primary descendant is independent of this reference vector and takes a simple form of just products of bulk to boundary propagators, so this one over q hat dot p, times angular momentum generators of the opposite helicity, and so n is normalization. Um, however, when L is greater than one, so beyond sub subleading order, the primary descendant does depend for massive external particles on this graviton reference point Z0. So to find the correct symmetry action, we need to revisit the soft factor itself. Um, so yeah, this is the, the form of the soft factor we're using. If we put in a massive momenta now, we find at all orders, the soft factor can be split into two separately covariant pieces, one of which is independent of the reference point, which is this one that I boxed here. So here F, is uh, q hat dot p, and the rest of the terms involve the reference point uh, z0. So notice here that this involves power, like powers of 1 over p squared. So in the, the, ma the massless limit, we need to first recombine these terms and then take the massless limit um, for this to make sense. But with that caveat, there is a natural proposal for what we should call the universal soft factor for massive external particles. Um, beyond sub sub leading order. It's just this first piece that transforms covariantly without the reference point. And you can check that it just transforms the way that we expect from the, the, from the weight of a soft graviton. And what's also nice is that the primary descendant of this uh, modified soft factor generalizes the form that we already found for the leading, sub leading, and sub sub leading cases where we just get this nice product of bulky boundary propagators uh, multiplying angular momentum generators of the opposite helicity. So, um, and you can just also check that this transforms with the correct weight for the primary descendant. So now as in the massless case, we can define this W action for every P and then this for right weights P that again correspond to the uh, order in the soft expansion and these modes m from 1 minus p to p minus 1. And we can consider this action of integrating the primary descendant of the soft factor over the plane, where we use um, we can use the form of the soft factor s prime for the leading, subleading, and sub-subleading cases, but we need this new uh, soft factor for massive particles beyond sub-subleading order. And so both of these expressions end up just becoming products of bulky boundary propagators times angular momentum generators, and they aren't so bad to work with. Uh, so you can again prove that this action respects the W one plus infinity algebra. Um, 
and I have five minutes left, but this is, I guess I went faster than I thought. So this is actually all that I wanted to uh, get through is that we have this action we can define in an analogous way for massless and massive particles um, that gives you the W action on external particles. So um, I'll just go through the summary and I can take questions. So in this work, we clarified the origin of the W symmetry action from a tower of momentum space soft factors for both massless and massive particles. And we proposed this new universal form of the massive soft factors um, motivated by SLTC covariance so that we can partition the soft factors invariantly from the rest of the amplitude. Um, and we showed that there's a non-trivial W action on massive particles uh, without having to rely on using collinear limits. Uh, so, and we and proved that this action satisfies the W1 plus infinity algebra. So, yeah, I think it's, um, there are lots of interesting questions about how can we use the W algebra. And I think, yeah, so this work, when we've, one way we've seen that it can be used is to partition amplitudes into parts, like the soft factor part that transforms covariantly under W and also is invariantly partitioned from the rest of the amplitude. Uh, but we can also ask about how the symmetry algebra is deformed by loops and higher dimension operators. What theories solve the W or the deformed W constraints? Uh, is there an organization of the non-universal terms in the soft expansion or, or some organization of some subset of them from symmetry principles? Uh, is there a, so for in celestial holography, one interesting question is, is there a simplification of the symmetry action on massive conformal primary states which I haven't defined here, but um, it's a transformation you can make to conformal primary basis for massive particles. Uh, is there a nice simplification of that for integer dimensions delta? And then uh, is there a kinematic algebra description of the symmetry action on massive particles in the same way as there is for massless ones? Uh, so I'll stop here and have a, I'm happy to take questions or discuss during the break. Thank you for the very interesting talk. Questions, please. Maybe I can start with a question. So uh, which theory of massive particles uh, is this relevant for? Um, I think we're still trying to figure that out, yeah. <laughs> um, massive gravitons? I, I don't I can't say definitively, yeah. Okay. But I think, yeah, that'd be super interesting to figure out. Yeah. There should be some sector of massive theories that this, uh, that you know, where you find only, I don't know, it, or it'd be nice to find something where you find only the, the soft factor part of the amplitude and none of the non-universal parts. But I, I don't know what theory that is yet. Yeah. Uh, this might be one and a half questions, because Carol kind of already asked what I was first thinking about. But uh, I mean, this, the soft factor looks because you know, in the case of the massive theory, since it's got all of these angular momenta, like it might be connected to the minimal coupling amplitude. But maybe you've looked and it's not quite the same. So, sorry, this is the massless one or the massive? The massive one. one. Massive. Yeah. Um, and by minimal coupling amplitude, you just mean like minimal. Well, we derived it for minimal coupling, I guess. Well, uh, I, I guess this, I mean, minimal coupling in the sense of these massive amplitudes. So this thing, which has got a, oh. uh, you know, massive spinner helicity and blah, blah. Yeah, so and we can talk about that after. Yeah, we're, I've been looking at that. I'm a little bit, there's a couple of things I'm sort of confused about and connecting exactly to that story. Okay, but yeah. yeah. So, indeed, that yeah. was a bit of a half question. And um, I was wondering if you had anything more to say about the kinematic algebra and the massive particles. That was interesting. Um, I don't right now. Yeah, I guess it seemed, I mean, there's a night, the kinematic algebra on massless particles seems very nice, but it's hard for me to see. Um, yeah, since the soft factors look so different for massive particles, it's hard to see like where that change happens. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to discuss also. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Uh, if not, let's thank you again.